greetings. That was actually a recording, but I am here in person. So, assalamu alaikum, Tendai, Maria, Barigani, whatever your greeting of peace, welcome. It's the Talk Black Radio Show. Whoo! Okay, it's our last show before we go as the at the end of Black History Month. So we're going to make it a bit of a Black History special. We're going to be having a really interesting conversation. I've got some some of my favourite guests who I actually spend a lot of time reasoning with behind the scenes. But I brought them to you today, so we're going to get into this right here on Talk Black Radio. As ever, I'm joined by uh, Brother David Mohammed, who's sitting next to me, and Brother Trevon, who's here to give us the best of his young mind, his research, um, because he's he's a bit of a research specialist, this one, and he's always here to make sure we get the actual facts, as it were. All right, well, this week, my guests are Nahanda Sankofa, who you may know because she actually is a previous host of On Omega FM. So she's here. She is the head of Sankofa Rising, the sister's circle, where the ladies get together and have that special talk time. Also... First time on Talk Black Radio, brother Trevor Hakim, the film doctor himself is in session. So we're actually really going to be, we're kind of going to fold our arms, take our notebooks out and really going to turn you over to brother Hakim for the next two hours. We could, he talks that well, but no, we won't. You know, we don't do it like that. Brother Hakim, welcome to Talk Black Radio. Thank you, sir. Thank you, brother Justin. Um, I'd like to give thanks and praises to the most high. I would like to also thank um, the whole Amiga FM family for allowing me to be here today. But more importantly, I also like to thank um, the Talk Black Radio family for hosting me today, allowing me to come on your show. And I hope I do your introduction for <laughs> justice. I, do you know what? Like I, I just, everybody says that they come on and they go, oh, I don't know. And then we get going and then it, it gets all, it gets crazy. But. I mean, in truth, I've just got to let the, the public know you're working constantly in, in the community and Brother does a lot of, um, you call it group mediation, um, so-called gang intervention kind of stuff. But when you're the, the level that you take it to, you will take out the negative connotations and really just focus on working with our young people in a positive fashion. Am I right? Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's a part of what I do. And a part of what I do is actually um, intervening um, with so-called gangs, um, or as we like to say, street organisations or serious group um, offenders or at risk of of being offenders. Um, and the intervention programme, again, you know, I have to say that it, it's coming from a foundation and inspiration from what helped me to develop, which has come from the Theology of the Nation of Islam. So it's a programme that helps to reform, resurrect, rejuvenate, revitalize oh, the real purpose that. within these young people and set them on a pathway to fulfill that purpose now in a positive way. Excellent. And I think sometimes people forget that, you know, when you come from the nation of Islam, sometimes yeah. like, oh, well, where's the nation? We've actually just jumped into the community <laughs> and you will see us pretty much everywhere, but you don't necessarily no but brother was working yeah. literally you said you only had a few hours sleep because you was working yeah. into the night wasn't um, you? because um, one of our clients um, one of my clients he was um he was kind of caught up in the situation last night so he was um arrested um along with a few others but unfortunately he's he's caught up in the situation he, it's not of his making um he's actually come out of that situation yeah but it's because of who his family member is he was also taken in for questioning, even though he's come away from it. And he's actually lined up for university next year. Wow. You know, um, so you so, do what so, we can to make sure so, that yeah, nothing again, gets in you the know, way. I've got, to, you know, I've got to give thanks and praise to Allah that he's he stepped away from that. He's He's been through my mentoring program, educational program. But unfortunately, it's still who his family members are also mm. um, are that he gets um, tarnished now. All right. even though he's come away from that lifestyle. Right. So that's another part of our work as well, because, you know, we also make sure that we work with the families because, mm. you know, a lot of the time you can work with the individual. Yes. But if they're going back to that home environment, yeah. then it's just one step forward, two step back. So we have also, the same with education. So to be honest with you, I know thing. that, you know, for the last several years, you know, mentoring has been a whole buzzword and mentoring the youth. But let me tell you something, there's a lot of parents out there who mentoring big time. Yes. So, you yes. know, with, with the mentoring educational programs, we make sure that the parents or the guardians and external adult family members are also part of that program. So 
we can holistically bring a whole family unit forward. So that's that's that's, that's, that's just thing. a part of the work that I do. We'll also make sure we get your details in terms okay. of just making sure people because it, it's something that's open to the public and they can. Yes, sir. Right. Um, so we we'll make sure we we go through that before the show is over. Yes, but sir. just a, a major thing. Nahanda, lovely to have you back. Welcome to the Talk Black Radio Show again. Thank you for having me. You are actually officially our first person to do two shows. <laughs> no, that's because you came late the first time and we needed you in here to complete the work. No, I'm playing, I'm playing. But it's a blessing to have you back. How has things, what you been up to? Um, I've been, do, you know, I uh, support a supplementary school most days out of the week. Um, but yes, just to be clear again with what Sankofa Rising is, mm. um, it is linking into what, brother Hakeem saying like he's saying um a lot of the parents themselves need, need mentoring and um, I'm a strong believer in the fact that women are the central organizers of the community and their children um to my understanding of how we are as African people mm. so uh, my sister circles are designed for self-development obviously empowerment um networking developing relationships and trying to solve a lot of the social problems amongst us as women but mainly to develop our character and understanding our purpose as women black african women in the community to our children and to the wider society and how we do develop our relationships with our men which again is essential for our survival yeah you you will find no detractors of that kind of work here so yeah so all right about well, character development that is the kind of guests we bring you on the talk black radio show it's all workers it's all activists who whether you see them or not they're going to leave here put their superman capes back on and get straight back to work as we all do and many of us do right let's get into the show news what's been happening trevon how we've we been doing what's been going on over the last seven days Hit me with some news. All right, well, like I said, we generally just go through and see what we can find that's interesting. I think one of the main stories that have come out um, is around the whole JFK files. So basically, um, President Trump released about 2,800 documents relating to the assassination of John F. Ken Kennedy. So we know who did it now? Uh, no, because what they did, <laughs> what they did is they withheld 300 documents. And from what I've read, um, these are the documents that would really have the critical information that at the last, because they were all supposed to be released at the last minute, then that all the, the agencies got together basically and told the president, look, like we need, we, this is, this is not, it's against public safety basically. So what he's done is they have until I believe April next year to prove, to prove that I think it's 180 days they have to prove that it shouldn't be released to the public. So 300 documents have been held. Um, in terms of ones that have come out, it's basically, so what's it going to tell you? Like the car wasn't blue, it was green. Nothing that can help. I'd say there's a few interesting things. I mean, there was a lot of um, a lot of it related to diff different cases, like mafia, like plans to use the mafia to kill Castro, um, discussions about assassinating Patrice. I, 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 I know we're going to be talking about films, but I've I've seen some of those things hit in in films, isn't it? Where they say the mafia was involved in the the assassination. Well, this so. Is it. Yeah. Does that come out like it was Not, real? Well, no, it was just, they were discussions, like, it's it's all unorganised, but it's like discussions between them in terms of using the Mafia to do it, perhaps. And then J. Edgar Hoover's concerns, basically, um, that the the public wouldn't buy the story of the assassination. <laughs> oh, wow. So he there's, like, memos in there where he's really concerned, talking to different members of his organisation, saying that, because the man who they said killed JFK was himself killed, that that would mean that the public wouldn't accept the story. They'd think it was a cover-up. So he was really concerned about it. That's one of the main things to come out. Okay, but it. they put that out <clears throat> because, you know, there's there's no way to... That's not a problem. You know, he's just a he's just a law-abiding citizen, or, um, J, what's not, Mr. Hoover, mm. and all he really wanted to do was just make sure everything was up and above board. Well, that's how some people see it. Others are saying... That's kind of using. It, it depends on how you choose to. People are saying, okay, that's that using it to justify. And say okay. That it's a did anyone else have a look at the JFK files? Anyone else put some study yeah. in? Hakeem, what did you get from them? Um, well, for me, it just was further confirmation. Um, I wouldn't quite say revelation as of yet, but mm. it was just further confirmation um, that. And I, I find it kind of ironic when you use the term 
um, or the terms um, law abiding citizen <laughs> um, according to whose yeah. laws yes. according to whose morals co- whose moral code because JFK not only did he go against the American constitution mm. but JFK or Mr Hoover sorry Hoover not yeah. only did he go against the American constitution um, being the head of the FBI mm. and with the whole counterintelligence program mm. but he went against just universal morals and of, principles of good behaviour of justice freedom and equality yes. In, in 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 implement in implementing um, the actions at the counterintelligence program, and I know you said you know I know you're going to want to talk about film, but the counterintelligence program and the FBI and CIA mm. ties in to the whole film industry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if people are not familiar with a CIA program that came about after the counterintelligence program from the FBI was launched. It's called um, Operation Chaos. Operation Chaos, and please look it up. Um, yeah, Operation real. Chaos. I, um, I'm just going to stop you just for a second. I'm going to give just a couple of seconds for okay. people to get their pens and their paper, because this is going to happen a lot when this brother starts talking. So Operation Chaos is first part. You've Operation, been warned. Go o- ahead. Operation Chaos, which was um, launched by the CIA. I know that a lot of people look at the CIA as dealing with um, America's foreign affairs. Yes. And Operation Chaos was one of its first domestic um, operations that it launched in conjunction um, with the then active counterintelligence program, which was run by the FBI. Um, And as you know, the CIA, they have a department, they have sections that are specifically trained Um, for physical assassin- assassinations where, you know, the FBI, they may do character assassination attempts um, and also physical, but the CIA, we know they are specifically trained for that. Um, and if you look into Operation Chaos and then if you look into um, further aspects of the counterintelligence program, and I think it's point number three or number four on the counterintelligence program where it says that we've also got to make black nationalists look unsavory mm. also towards white liberals and yes. a white yes. public yes. at large. Yes. Yes. And there was a Hollywood film actress, um, a white American um, Hollywood film actress by the name of Jean Seberg. And, you know, she was like the Gwyneth Paltrow of her day, late 60s, 70s. And she had donated something like five hundred dollars um, to a Native American league, sports league, so the young Native American children could buy sporting uniforms, what have you. And she also, according to FBI released um, um, documents under the Freedom of Inform- Information Act, she also donated up to about ten thousand dollars to um, the Black Panther Party. And then that's when she, that's when she was now on the watch list of the FBI. And they actually wanted to recruit her. She refused to be recruited um, into the counterintelligence program. Um, and so because she refused, they then started the whole character assassination. What um, was her name? Seagrove? Jean Seberg. Seberg, okay. Um, and they basically... They use her home as well. They, they ru- oh, more than her home. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they ruined her career. Um, and if again, if people have doubts, um, the FBI, again, would either have not just sympathizers, but they would actually have infiltrators at work for the general mass media. So mm-hmm. they had journalists for um, news and film publications that started to now write articles oh, wow. about her and her husband. Mm-hmm. Um, that when she was pregnant, that she was actually pregnant by one of the leaders of the Black Panther mm-hmm. Party. Mm-hmm. Um, so that also caused a rift in her marriage. It caused so much stress on the woman that she gave birth to her child prematurely and the, and the child was, was wow. born and still, still birth. She died but, young as well, didn't but, she? However, what she then done, um, at the funeral of her baby, she uh, made sure it was an open oh. casket so everyone could see it was a white child. Mm. Um, and then she started to try to fight back um, through litigation and, and character assassination for the courts. Um, I think there was one Paris court that ruled in her favor that there were certain publications that had to pay her large sums of money in, in libel cases. Um, 
but then a few years later she was found um dead in the back of her car i think it was in in france in france yeah um, I just, I just... supposedly um a supposed suicide yeah and this was when she wanted to pick up the pace even more to fight and reveal what the fbi were doing so this is now now this now the thing is if this is what they're prepared to do with one of their own mm. this is a white woman that's a hollywood actress but because she was uh, a, a supposedly a sympathizer a sim mm. for for the Black Panthers so or anyone Panthers. who was, who was so you fighting can imagine, for us. So you can imagine now what they would do to us if yes. that's what they're prepared to do yes. on their own. Yes. And so, so there's always been a tie with with um, Hollywood um, and the counterintelligence program and the media. Just as it's the same out here with MI6, MI5. Mm. Um, propagation. Mm. It, you know, it goes all the way back to World War One and World War Two. Um, the BBC, you know, was which is one of the longest standing media broadcasting institutions on the planet, was known to have a propagation department to propagate mm. um, the war effort in its colonies, Africa and Asia, to make them think that Britain was the motherland. Mm. And they had a department specifically for that, and they would use radio broadcasts, they would use print media publications to direct the public thinking within Africa. Was it successful? In the Caribbean. It was very successful. It was so successful, it's inherited, it's, it's lasted it's, it's till today to because, I mean, look, again, people need to look up um, the name of a gentleman by, um, his name is Walter Lippmann. Get your pens and paper, like the brother said. Um, we're doing it in the studio too, so don't watch that. And we were <laughs> with tablets, but we're doing it too. Go ahead. And you're, actually, you're getting it straight off the top of the dome today. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's Brother Hakeem freestyling. <laughs> um, so Walter Lippmann. Um, people need to look up Walter Lippmann. Walter Lippmann, we're talking, I'm going back to like the earliest, the earlier part of like the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And Walter Lippmann, he, I mean, he, he had a, uh, uh, an ideology that the public mindset could be controlled. He had an ideology that you've really got three sections within society. You've got the herd, which is the masses. Mm. Then you've got the specialist class, and then you've got the elite class. Mm. The specialist c class work for the elite class, and that's the power that you don't see behind the throne. Mm. Wow. And the specialist class, they're the ones that manage society. Mm. And he felt that you could have a new art, almost like an art form of revolution of democracy because he realized, well, hold on, if, you're, if, you've, got, if you've got a social order that's set up by a totalitarian dictatorship, when you need to keep the people in line, you bludgeon them over the head. Wow. But when you want to pretend you're a democracy, what is your tool of bludgeoning then? Mm. It's the media. It's the media. Mm. And so then he came up with a concept called man, uh, manufacturing consent. And this man was a democratic liberal. He was not even a Republican. So a lot of time when I break this down, people think, oh, he must have been a conservative. Yeah, yeah, no, we're yeah. talking about he was a liberal Democrat. He was also a consultant to the American government. And he came up with the whole idea of manufacturing consent. Um, and then people also need to look into what's called the Creel Commission, C-R-E-E-L, the Creel Commission. The Creel Commission is what formulated what was called public relations. And we're talking about, again, this is the early 1900s going into the 1920s and the 1930s. Do you know what I really like when you're, when, when you're going, and, and forgive me, because, I, Good. you know, sometimes I could just listen to brother talk and just sit here. Like I was going to tie it up. I, Sorry, I was going to tie it up to bring it to modern times. I, was I, I know up. that, but then if you could tie it up in a couple of seconds, uh -huh. then go for it. Yep, yes, sir. Go yes, for sir. It. And so jumping forward, you know, I mentioned the term manufacturing consent. Yes, sir. Right, if we jump forward to Tony, Prime Minister Tony Blair, um, um, President um, George W. Bush, and then if you look at the Sun newspaper, mm. the Mirror, the Daily Mail, do you know there was a slogan that was put out in the second wave, and the reason why I say second wave, because most people think that the war had stopped regarding the first invasion of Iraq, in 91. In 91, but it had continued for an ongoing 10 years. Oh, okay. Until, that, until 2001, 2002. Was that it, like it, a, a second wave of it, people yeah, that's came what I'm in? Saying. It was a second wave. It, was, it never stopped. There was always no fly zone sanctions on yes. Iraq. They were always still bombing Iraq for 10 years continuously up until George They had the w. sanctions where Bush. people were dying. That's right. Millions died, that's right? That's right. Okay. And so now, um, to show that... Um, what Walter Lippmann had put in place um, from the early 1900s is still with us today. 
you've got to remember that they were going under this whole um, fabrication of weapons of mass destruction, right? Mm. But then the public, at first the public was going along with that, mm -hmm. but then the public started to get a little bit more wise. You know, there was, you know, we know there was um, the Honourable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and he was like singing a solo to begin with that I this remember. Is an it's an unjust yeah. war, they're telling lies, but then a chorus started to come up over over the years, he other started people, like a week after the Trin Towers other, went other, down. He other, had a press conference. That's right. Other people started to now join in and say, you know what? Yeah, I think mm, this is this doesn't sound right to yeah. me. I think this is based on a falsehood. So now, see, you can't turn around and tell the masses of people and the masses of uh, the public to support my foreign policy. Yes. Mm. Because if you say support my foreign policy, you're going to want to say, well, what is your foreign policy? <laughs> yeah. And if your foreign policy is based on going in. And if your foreign policy is based on someone like Dick Cheney, who is the CEO of Halliburton, mm. Halliburton, which is a company that focuses on energy production, and Halliburton is a major investor of another company called the Carlyle Group that George Bush um, Sr., son of a Bush, yep. a W. Head of the, former head um, of the CIA. John, ex-Prime Minister John Major. Mm -hmm. Um, and even through the Clinton Foundation, all of these are investors in what's called the Carlyle Group. Now, the Carlyle Group is one of the biggest weapons investors George, on the planet. John Major. John Major. He like butter wouldn't look, melt. Like I say, people need to look into what I'm saying. Mm. Wow. Now, the Carlyle Group is one of the biggest investors on the planet regarding weapons. Now, if you're a businessman, I know that you've done shows on economics, right? Mm. Right. If you want an investment on a product, you want to make sure there's a demand for it, right? Yep. So if you're an investment investor in weapons of mass destruction, that means there has to be a demand for it. Yeah. What is that demand? That means there has to be a... War. There has to be continuous... War. You understand? Mm. Otherwise, it's a bad investment. Yep. So now what keeps propagating and propelling that war? You've got to be able to also have what's what I like to call the fifth column of the government, which is the media. Yeah. Mm. And to be able to do that, you've got to be able to manufacture consent. So you don't use the media to say, support my foreign policy. What you do is now say to the masses of people, say, support our troops. Mm. So that's the reason why you had yeah. the Sun newspaper, the Washington Times, whether it was here or in America, all coming with the same slogan, support our troops, support our troops. Mm. Because now people want to feel a sense of being a patriot. Yes. People also feel, well, hold on, I can't yes. go against that individual over there. They're just doing a job. Yes. Mm. They're fighting the for- The flags our... were everywhere for a yeah, while. Yeah, they're fighting for our freedom. Yes. So therefore I've got to support that. Yeah. See, if you said foreign policy, that makes me question. But if you say just support this man or woman that's just trying to do a job, they come from the same Give me neighborhood one as So me. hold on. You know when you say that, that part, manufacturing consent. some of it's that, and then the other part is people are just scared to go against it because the wave is so heavy, so they get the flags out and you say, exactly. well, I'm not saying anything about the troops. I support the troops before you've actually had a chance. And, to the, question, and the question is, does this tie back into film? 100%. If you're not familiar with Carl Grove, find out who he is. He was the spin doctor of George W. Bush. Elder. George W. Bush. That's the younger one. That's the young one, okay. son of a Bush. Yes. Yeah. So now <laughs> you coined when, that phrase, go ahead. So now when um it was a it was November mm. um two thousand and one. So we were talking about a couple of months after September the eleventh. Yep. Carl Grove was ordered to meet with the biggest movers and shakers within Hollywood. Right. So you know Denzel Washington? Y yes. You know Wesley Snipes? Yep. You know Halle Berry? Yep. None of them were there. <laughs> I said the biggest shape is a movie. Right? <laughs> but look, Everybody was there, everyone's like, holding. Oh, no! Look, if, if, if you know them, you should know yeah. people like Sumner Redstone. You should know people like Jeffrey Katzenberg. See, I can, I can list off these names and we ain't going to know who they are. Why? Because these are the CEOs. These are the people that control Viacom, yeah, yeah. that controls now MTV yeah. base and what have you. These are the people that control Sony mm. and Paramount and Warner's. He met with all of them. This can be, this is not conspiracy theory. Mm. This is reality. This is fact. Mm. He met with all of them. Mm. And all of them were told, well, look, we need to start propagating a new message within our films. Look, America has been attacked like it's never been attacked before. Mm. There are people that question our foreign policy. You've got to make everyone in the world buy into America. Mm. And it's no accident the check when the Oscars happened with Halle Berry, Denzel Washington, and Sidney Poitier, the first time in Oscar history where you had three African-Americans all winning away. an Oscar 
of the same night. Sidney Poitier for Lifetime Achievement, um, um, Denzel Washington for Best Actor, yeah. and Halle Berry for, for Best Actress, right. right? This was just after September the 11th. And it's like, oh, you know what? We've got to make maybe some people happy in our midst because like scripture says, just in case they become unhappy and join onto an enemy of ours. Okay, so we've got now, to make them feel that they're part of the system. Hold on, because maybe I was going to give you a couple of seconds to wrap that piece up. <laughs> I told, oh, you know, I don't know. Can I give justice to what I told you this brother could take the show and do it justice? Thank you very much, brother Hakeem. And don't go nowhere. I need you to come yes, back. Sir.